Once again, thank you everyone for joining us at Changing of the Hip Hop Guards. I am your host, Uncle E. That is my partner, the journalist Sincere. And today we have our guest, Ernie C., guitarist, co-founder of Body Count. Thank you for joining us, sir. It's a pleasure. No, no problem whatsoever. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much. If you could do us a favor, Ernie, and kind of take us back to your beginnings and let everybody know where you're from and a little yeah. bit about your background history. Okay, I'm 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 from Los Angeles, basically. You know, I I went to Crenshaw High School. Everyone knows Crenshaw High. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, brothers Johnson went to my high school. If you know who they are, <laughs> you know. So I went to Crenshaw High. Um, I, I I've known uh, Ice T since Crenshaw High. I mean, he's right, my right my high school friend. I did a post the other day. I said, we used to talk because he just had a birthday. He turned 64. And uh, right. we used to sit around the lunch table at uh, Crenshaw High, you know, and now we can both order from the senior menu. So we've, been, <laughs> we've been through it. So you guys were getting lunch together? And now oh, yeah, yeah. Lunch together. <laughs> yeah, we, we order from the senior menu now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. That's a blessing, though, man. Oh, you tell me about it. You know, we've, we've lost soldiers along the way, but we're, we're still ticking. We're, we're working on a new record as we speak. Nice, nice, nice. Very dope. Uh, can you take us back to some of your uh, early uh, musical influences uh, early on? Okay, so, you know, I, I went to a, a, basically a funk tour. You know, we played a lot of funk. We played the, the parliaments and things like that. But my major influence has been the Isley Brothers. Ernie Isley, you know, I met him when I was a very young dude, like, like 16 years old, and I saw him not too long ago. He's been a, a major influence on my playing, uh, you know, George Clinton, and uh, then one day somebody gave me um, some Led Zeppelin, and that mm. changed my life. You know, I started listening to Zeppelin, Deep Purple. You know, so that, the Body Count is a mix of a lot of different things. You know what I mean? I played oh, yeah. Peter Frampton in high school in front of a bunch of Crips. <laughs> <laughs> in, in front of Crips, man. They, they were like, we we don't know what he's doing, but he's good. We ain't gonna mess with him. You know? <laughs> right. Oh man. Take us back to uh, getting into music. At what point did you start picking up the guitar? Was that your first instrument? My first instrument, my only instrument. You know, I can dabble at other things, but, you know, I can't play. But, uh, you know, uh, I started playing when I was like 12 years old. You know, I'm an only child. And so uh, raised by my father. So, so when I got to... to um, from we moved here from Detroit, but back in Detroit, uh, what made me want to play the guitar was seeing this guy named Dennis Coffee. Mm -hmm. Now Dennis Coffee had a group called Dennis Coffee and the uh, Detroit Guitar Band, and I I wasn't playing them, but I just saw him, and he was a big influence on me. So when I got here, I didn't have no friends. I didn't know anyone except for some some bloods that wanted to, me to hang out with them. So I just bought a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a guitar. That, that, I went in that direction. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. Right. Were you self-taught or uh, did you have no, a mentor? I, I, did you instruction? I, I I'm I'm self-taught. I went to take guitar lessons, and and when I I'm left-handed, so the guitar teacher was like, "Well, when if you were going to play the piano, you wouldn't change the strings around. I mean, you wouldn't change the keys around." Right. So he had me. He had me start playing right-handed. I played for like six months to a year right-handed. I was like, "This is not working good." So then I saw Jimi Hendrix play. I'm like, "Oh, this this guy don't know what he's talking about." So I started teaching myself after that. Wow! Wow! That's crazy. So uh, I can still play right-handed and left-handed. So I can I can play rhythm right-handed and I can play leads left-handed. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, funny story. My first concert was Kiss in like 1982, and mm -hmm. uh, I kind of got a backlash for being the black kid, you know, liking mm -hmm. uh, rock. Did you ever encounter uh, that uh, living in uh, California? Well, uh, hold that for one second. Here's a funny story, though. In 1993, we toured with Kiss on their farewell concert. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so, so, wow. Uh, but, you know, but um, back to your, your question, you know, it, it was like people didn't, you know, they think you're weird. They don't know what you're doing. You're not listening to pop music. They don't, they can't figure it out. But, you know, I, but I learned the songs that all the people liked. 
You know, oh, like when I played, when I played at, at, at Crenshaw, like I'd play, you know, uh, Get the Funk Out of My Face. I'd play, you know, some Parliament songs. I'd play the Isley Brothers songs. But when I, you know, later on, I'd break into something else. They'd be like, what is that? But it's good. We don't know what it is, but it's good. So right, right. <laughs> that's how I learned. That's, can, right. can you tell us a little bit about that um, tour with Kiss? How was that? No, we... We, we just opened for them at one show, you know, okay. I, I, I remember Ice was uh, talking, we were talking with Gene one time and he's like, well, first a helicopter comes out and, you know, shines it on the band. We're like, that's our whole budget, tour budget. <laughs> 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 this is the, the helicopter shot is like our whole budget. So uh, you know, it, it was good, you know, but, you know, when we first started, we, we, we toured with Guns N' Roses, Metallica, you know, we got really fortunate because there really wasn't an avenue for us to tour on. Right. So we toured with some some thrash bands, we toured with some 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 rock bands. You know, we were be it was before, you know, the popularity of the fusion of metal and, and rap came together. Right, right, right. Did you get any kind of feedback from some of those groups? They liked us. You know, my first concert, uh, Duff McKagan came in and he was like, he heard about the band and, uh, you know, he came in and Ice was like, you need to talk to Ernie, and he's my friend to this day. You know, he supported us right. from day one. You know, nice, nice, right? Nice. That's the basis for Guns N' Roses, right? Yeah, the, the basis for Guns N' Roses. Dave Mustang supported us. You know, Megadeth. The real, yeah, Megadeth. They, the real G's. They came out and supported us. You know, we got okay. some 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 slack. You know, I won't get into that, but we get. You know, but the real G's came out and supported us. Nice, nice. Very dope. Well, we talked a little bit about getting into uh, being a guitarist. Uh, can you talk about some of your earlier bands that you uh, were in before Body Count? Oh, you don't want to talk about that. But uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> let's no, talk I, about. You know, let's talk. No, I played. Talk about I, played you. I played from everyone from um, Santana to um, I. I paid musical dues. You know what I mean? I um, I lived with Ella Fitzgerald. You know, when my my. My family didn't have nowhere to live. She invited us to stay there. Um, oh, wow. I, play, I played with this guy named Joe Barbosa, who was, you know, was friends. We played with Renardo, Michael Walden, uh, Randy Jackson, that whole, you know, the whole musician clique. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Wow. But, wow. but I, I, you know, I, I learned how to be a musician. Then I, I, the, the songs that Body Count plays, people think, you know, because it's one, three, five, which is like a, a root, uh, a, you know, a fifth and a, a third. People think, you know, it's real simple, but it's more complicated than you think. Right, 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 right. Wow. That's amazing. You talked about uh, going to school with uh, Ice-T uh, at Crenshaw High. Uh, at what point did you guys reconnect and start uh, having these discussions about forming uh, Body Count? Well, what happened was Ice went off to the to Army right after... Uh, High school, he joined the army because he had a kid, so he became a ranger. You know the badasses of the badasses. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I went on to to play. And then when he got out, he got out of the um, the the the, uh, the army, and he called me up and says, "I'm gonna, I, you know, because I, you know, we we weren't hanging, you know, because he was doing some other stuff and I was doing some stuff, but he knew that he was gonna do some music, so he tried to hook up with me when he got out of high school. And my drummer." was his friend, my drummer that passed, Beatmaster V. And he said, talk to Ernie. So he's like, I got this new kind of music I want to do. It's called rap. And I listened to him, I'm like, eh. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> 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 you know, but then he, he, he turned me on to uh, run DMC with Rockbox and all that stuff. OK, like, OK. OK, I can relate to this. Yeah. But, but, but when they had the, the, just the, the hip hop, you know, when hip hop first started, you know, just the beat and the you know, was, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> where, where do I fit into this whole get down, you know? <laughs> right. So, so that's a, a kind of what happened with Body Count. You know, we played on, I played on Ice's early records, you know, the, all those early records. And I played on that girl tried to kill me and all that. And I, I did some tours. Mm. I went and played some shows with him with the rapping Duke and, you know, all that kind of the stuff. Rapping Duke, wow. I, I was, we were in Electric Boogaloo. You know, I did Electric Boogaloo with him. You know, I'm in, and go back to right. there. And I go back to um, uh, uh, rapping with Mario Van Peeple in it. You know, that's an OG. 
OG stuff with right. the force MDs, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, wow. so, so we reached a point on these the ISIS records where we couldn't put any more guitars on it without it becoming so, morphing into something else. So that's where body count comes in. Mm, right. Can you talk about, uh, did you guys uh, shop a demo as far as a group or were you just kind of oh, yeah. in the, okay. Well, ISIS was already signed on Warner Brothers. And so he he gave it to some people there, and I won't mention some names, but some big names like ah, we don't feel it. And then later on, after they felt it, <laughs> after we sold a million records, they felt it. They're like, we knew that we knew that was going to be a success. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we shopped it at some deep labels and things like that. But it it was just easier to stay at Warner Brothers, you know, because we were at he was at home there. We wouldn't have to negotiate another contract. So it we did go around. But it came back home, you know, to Sire Records with, with Howie Klein and Seymour Stein. You know, Seymour Stein, he signed, you know, the Talking Heads, Madonna, Seal. You know, he knows mm -hmm. what he's doing. <laughs> right, right. So can, can you talk a little bit about the process of coming up with the first, with your debut album, Body Count? Well, you know, I always say, you know, the original band was basically high school friends. And I always, I always laugh and say, you know, I start this band with his friends, so we won't have to borrow money from him. That's the best way to keep your, keep your friends employed, so then they don't come to you for money. Right. So we start, we we started the band. You know, my my drummer is my was my dear friend. I've known him since the early days. You know, and he didn't know how to play a double bass. Mm. He, all he all he knew how to play was you know straight funk beats you know what i mean right so we bought him a drum of a double bass kit and he was like what the hell uh. so he, we, by the time vic died duff mckagan and a lot of people said he was the most improved person in the band because he mm. learned something new and he used to practice every day to learn how to play that double double pedal you know right 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 you guys so, appeared on i'm my, my fault uncle you go ahead yeah, no, no, no. I was just gonna say. So, what about when it came time to start working on music for your debut album? Mm -hmm. How did that go? You know, like what was the process? What were the talks, the sessions? Okay. At first, Ice wasn't going to be the singer. Mm -hmm. He, he was. I was going to be a, a, the singer. I sang some songs. And I just wasn't comfortable with it because he was busy doing his rap thing. And so, you know, Body Count was an idea. We didn't know if it could work. So he was just helping me out basically because i'm the high school guy that did the music in high school you know so okay. he was basically helping me out so um later on i i didn't want to sing we auditioned some singers they came in with spandex and puff sleeves <laughs> no no you know we're trying to keep it real you know that was the whole thing of, about body count when it came out you know because nirvana set the standard you know right, nirvana right. was kind of like come as you are this is right, who we right. are. We're coming like this. We're not, we don't have no glitter on our face and we don't have <laughs> spandex and we're not, you know, yeah. jumping out of parachutes, you know, parachutes mm -hmm. on stage. We're just a band. So body right. count came as that, you know what I mean? We, we came, we're like, you know, the devil, heavy metals like the devil and Satan. We're like, the streets of LA are just as scary as that. So we can just talk about that and scare people to death. That's really scary. That's that's the format of it, you know? Okay, okay. You know, and then when we first started the band, we had two guys that stood on the side of the stage with shotguns. And Anthony Keita says, the band is good, but the two guys with the guns are more scary than everything, you know? <laughs> because they, when you when you got on the stage, the stage die, they point a gun at you. Like, that's, that, that's, that's scary, you know? They're not throwing you back. They're shooting you. So. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Wow. You guys appeared on Ice-T's OG original Gangster album uh -huh. uh, with a song called Body Count. Was the name of the group uh, before that Body Count or did it, did it come from that album? No, it, it was Body Count. We started the band, the working title of the band. Ice used to go around Warner Brothers and they, he says, I have a new rock band. And they're, and they're like, what's the name of it? He's like, Body Count. And everybody go, oh, Body Count. You know, it st stuck with you. It sounded like you heard it before. And coming from South Central, it just seemed like the right name. You know what I mean? And plus, it's BC, it's Bloods and Crips. So it's LA. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, okay. Oh, wow. So, right. right. 
Uh, Ice introduced you guys, I believe, in 91 at Lollapalooza. What do you remember most about that? Oh, I remember, like, we did five shows in L.A., like, in front of 20 people. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're playing in front of 40,000. The band got really advanced before the band. Like, if the band would have had time to, um, to, to play more, it would have been better. But thinking back, it, it's the way it was supposed to be. You know what I mean? It's it's good to, because we wrote the songs on the road. We, you know, we we went out and played a lot of Palooza. What, what was the thing about that? We only played for 15 minutes. The mm -hmm. band was good enough to pull your attention for 15 minutes. We couldn't play for an hour and a half. We didn't have that many songs. The songs we played were the songs we knew. And we knew them really well. So we played for <laughs> right. 15 minutes. So then everybody's like, the band is great, you know. So then we were able to write other songs. Then we came okay. out with a record. Then we were able to play. But we had we only had uh, Cop Killer, There Goes in the Neighborhood. You know, we only had about five songs. Right. Can you talk a little bit about the time? Because I know Ice was hot about this time with uh, Original Gangsta. And I think uh, it was around the time he went on tour with Public Enemy for the Apocalypse 91 tour. Mm -hmm. So where did you guys find time to uh, record the album? Well, you know, the band basically it runs without ice. You know what I mean? He He's the vocalist, but the band needs to play as a band. Because I'm, you know, right. the band can we can rehearse and then he can just come in and fit into the pocket. You know what I mean? We have to have everything like laid like a a, a, a a track for him. You know, we play like a track. I remember when we first started, he used to go go. I'm like, no, no, we we're, we count. <laughs> it's not a drum machine. <laughs> we, count. <laughs> we count things in. We have a count. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, it took a little while to figure that out. But he, he's he's good because he knows what he can do. He knows his melodies. He knows how he sings. He has a good uh, awareness of himself, what he can do. So, right. Was it was it hard for Ice T in the beginning? Like you know, going from being like hip hop, which is rap, but then now having to sort of sing. You know, was that a hard transition for him? No, it, it's natural. You know, I, I, natural? I thought I thought I thought he does the same thing that he does with his rap music, only okay. with with us behind. I mean, I'm I'm Ice T fan. I go to Ice T shows and I'm in the front row singing all the lyrics. You know, I like when it goes like that. But body counts a, a little different. It's a little more okay. aggressive. Ice T, right. you you can hold a, a glass of champagne and, and have a mink coat on. You can't do that at a body count show. You'd be on the ground. You know. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of two different things. I remember when the pimps used to come to our shows, like y'all, you, you know, you had the wrong be, show. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, you got to put down that cane, man. Yeah. It's, gonna, it's gonna get. He, he used to say, you know, because we used to mix up the show. If you should do an ice tea show and a body count show. And basically you say, okay, all the black people after the ice tea show, you need to go to the back because the white people are gonna come up and it's gonna get wild in here. <laughs> but the funny thing about it, my nephew came to a show, he'd never been to a, uh, uh, been in the pit. He's like, I had so much fun, you know what I mean? Nice, nice. Very dope. That, that would have been fun to see some pimps in the mosh pit. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that might be that, a song right there. No, that pimps was the, pimps yeah, yeah, yeah. in the pit. Pimps in the pit. <laughs> hey, run that, run that five, man. You got to on that one. We'll take, we'll take half of a seat. <laughs> Can you take us back to that deal with Sire Warner Brothers? Was it just for a one album deal? No, it was like three albums that we didn't do because we got so much right. crap. We had everything all planned. We, MTV was going to make us the sweethearts, the darlings. They were going to give a giveaway, you know, and all that stuff happened. They kind of, whoa, mm. <laughs> let's step back for a minute. But um, it was, like, you know, how Seymour came to our show, Seymour Stein, and he, he came to my show. And the only words he's ever said to me was like, you'll be very successful in this business. I'm like mm -hmm. okay, now that, that, that's that's some words right there, and uh, the next the next day after that, we had I had seventy five thousand dollars because Ice basically called this my band, so I I got seventy five thousand dollars as an advance on a memo deal when they were giving away money, on a memo deal to do a record, and so he said to me, he says, you got seventy five thousand. I said that's great. He says, how much do you owe me? I'm like, 
oh, I got to pay you too. <laughs> so then I had to pay him, I had to pay, you know, the guys in the band, I had to pay for the equipment. He bought me a car. I had like $3,000 at the end of the day, you know? Oh, so that's wow. when I'm like, welcome to the music business, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Talked a little bit about uh, the sessions. What was the discussions you guys had as far as the direction you wanted to take that album? Uh, what kind of internal talks as far as subject matter were you guys going through? Well, what happened was um, we were going to get uh, some big time producer to, to produce the record. And then it, it was, it was going to cost too much money because we didn't have a whole lot of money to do the record. So I decided to produce the record. I had no idea what I was doing, but, you know, I hired uh, someone, the second engineer there that worked on Metallica's album mm. uh, on that, uh, you know, their, that black album. And yeah. um, mm -hmm. when he was that same studio, I said, well, they sounded pretty good coming out of there. Let me see how, <laughs> let's see what happens if we go in here and play. So uh, we just wrote the songs, we laid them all down and, you know, it, it just, it was just magic. It came together really well, you know? Right. Um, take us back to, uh, I believe There Goes the Neighborhood was your first single. What kind of uh, response did you guys get from that when it dropped? Oh, it, it was good. You know, we, 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 we censored that for it to be on MTV. We changed the lyrics up. And um, when we finished the record, the, um, MTV was like, they're going to give a giveaway, like a, you know, a give away our equipment and things like that. And the, the guys, uh, I sat down with Howie Klein. He's like, okay, everything's good. You know, we like the record. Because we, we were going to put Cop Killer, you know, on the front of the guy's chest. We did put Cop Killer. They were like, you can't, we're not going to be able to sell this. So then we, we, he's like, they didn't think nothing about Cop Killer. They thought the song we were going to have a lot of trouble with was going to be Mama's Gotta Die Tonight. You know, Mama's mm. Gotta Die was a song. They're like, oh, it's, it's about killing your mother. You're going to have trouble with that. But they, we had more trouble with Cop Killer than anything else. Or, and KKK, bitch. But that's some Charles and Heston stuff that got in the way, you know? <laughs> right, right. Right. Uh, what did the, the label say when you guys finished the album, turned it in? What was the reaction from the label uh, before that, it hit the streets? That, that was the reaction. They, they loved it. They, they just didn't like uh, Mama's Gotta Die. They like everything else can fly because the problem, the thing was, we played Cop Killer for a year before that, so it was no problem. We played Cop Killer all on Lollapalooza, so we played that in front of you know maybe four hundred thousand people. You know, mm -hmm. so they didn't see a problem with it hmm. whatsoever. But they're like, that mama's got to die because we played that somewhere. We played it at a show here with L.A. Guns or something like that, and they're like. People were like, whoa, what is this song about? <laughs> right. But were, were you guys somewhat surprised that the labels were actually backing you guys up with that? You know, when you were having the controversy? Because a lot of times the labels kind of tend to shy away, right? Because they're like, oh, we don't want the problems. No, those guys at Warner Brothers, you know, they were they were behind us because it got into, you know, what people aren't talking about now, freedom of speech, you know, because right, right. right now everything's all messy now, you know, you, you don't know what's what. But right then it was like you didn't have the Internet, so there wasn't a place to go underground with it. This was in the public's face. So they, they were like, we got to you got to make a line somewhere. You know okay. what I mean? So they were going to draw a line. But the catch about it is. Warner Brothers music is a, a dot on Time Warner. Mm -hmm. So the, the, Time Warner is like the big brother. And, and they, they kind of like, yeah, you guys, you know, you're messing up our big empire here with this little black group from South Central LA. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. You, you, you know, you're going to have to do something about this. So. Right, right. Now, was it a group? I know I saw that Ice T kind of wanted to remove the song because he felt that it was bringing. It was taken away from you know the guy's actual project, and right. he didn't want that. Was that a group decision or? Yeah, you know yeah. we 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 wrote the record, you know, and we could stand behind the record, you know, and we we wanted to, people to hear that we could play because people got confused, you know, they got they're like it's a rap record, NWA. I'm like we're not NWA, right, right, we're right. not in their category. Then you throw, throw us over here with Metallica, we're not a rap group. You, mm. Ice is a rapper, but we're not a rap group. We're a metal band. Right. So that's, you know, 
I think just because they, they categorized this as metal made it more easier for them to, to put the finger on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it was like I shot the sheriff or if it was like, you know, something like that, it's 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 different. It's a whole right, different right, thing, right, you know? Right. Right. Okay. When that album finally came out, what was the general public saying, magazines and, and your peers? What was the overall uh, feedback you were getting when that album came out? I think they liked it. I think they loved it. It was a good reaction at that time. We sold like, you know, 300,000 records in a week. I mean, the records numbers that we sold right then, right now, wouldn't, you know, would be, you'd be number one. We ended up like number 15. You know what I mean? Wow. So, you know, just because of the way records right. are, but they loved it. We got on tours, you know, you know, like, like I said, Metallica took us out. Guns N' Roses took us out. We took it with DRI. We were able to do our own club tours, you know, so, and we went to Europe for the first time and, you know. Right. Did uh, Ice-T receive any type of backlash uh, for, uh, you know, being in a thrash uh, rock group at the time? No, because he's sincere about it. You know, I always say, if you're sincere about anything, you can do whatever you want to. That's like the Beastie Boys doing, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, hip hop. They're sincere. You know what I mean? You can't, they're not fronting. You, you can't say nothing about it. You, there's right, no right, denying right. it. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Uh, some of your best memories overall of recording that album. What are some uh, Ernie C's best moments? Uh, some stuff we may not know. Uh, some tidbits. What? do uh you consider you know, your best memories during that time well one thing that was going on doing that record was we recorded a studio called uh one-on-one -on -one recording it's in los angeles it's a high-end studio and it's cost like five thousand a day to record back then you know what i mean and so uh at the time they were building the subway under right across the street from it that ends up in north hollywood they were putting a subway in so it had that big machine going 24 hours a day so when we go into the studio we hear that machine and ice was trying to do the record you know with his cans on i'd hear the the, the, machine, the machine on the, <laughs> uh, on, the, on, the uh, on the cans and so we would have to stop we have to wait for them to take lunch or something didn't do the vocal and the studio was like we'll give you another day and all this kind of stuff so that was that was that's what i remember most i just remember trying to to, to listen to a, a a mole under the ground wow. Right. Wow. <laughs> just just to kind of jump so you guys were nominated twice for a grammy Yes, now right. twice, and, and actually won one in twenty we twenty. Let, we're still rolling on that. We until until uh, next month or until they get somebody else. We're still. I'm still. Hold on one second. Hold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we got this, and you know it's the oh, funny, it, 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 it's the funniest thing in the world because I was like, ah, we, we finally got when you work your whole life for for a Grammy, you know, and we got the nomination of, of this the last song, and I, but this song is like, it, it, it was so amazing that we won, you know. Well, that that that's exactly what I was going to ask you was all those years going by, and to then finally get one was it was it what you expected or always hoped? Well, it, it kind of puts you in a, a good category, you know. You know. You know. Twenty years ago, uh, twenty-five years ago, I had a song that goes, "I never get a Grammy, so fuck the G. All I need is a crowd and my MIC." And the MIC. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, right. I was like, "Oh, we won a Grammy!" Great. <laughs> 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 so, with, with age comes some things. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah. some acceptance going on, you know, and yeah. it, it puts you in a category where you say, you know. In the same breath that they say Metallica and Guns N' Roses, they can't just they can't just push us to the side. So right, even right. though you know they can you know say things about us, you say I say well I got a Grammy, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, when yeah. I go somewhere now, I say they say you're in a bad because I'm like you know I'm still like a kid at heart, you know I go hang yeah, out with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, like I see people at the gym, like what you do? I say I play guitar. They're like, hey, you play guitar. Yeah. I, I I got a Grammy. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You, oh, you play guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really play. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it, listen, it, 
Go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. I was going to say, same, I didn't mean to It's the same thing. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, it's the same dude. But you got to, you know, it's like uh, the Wizard of Oz. You get a, something that proves that you're this. You know what I mean? Listen, at the end of the day, it's just like basketball players, football players. I mean, you're playing to get that chip, right? You play to get that trophy. Right. right. It's all it is. But congratulations. Very well deserved. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> When that album came out, how did life change for Ernie C personally? Oh, it didn't change that that much. You know what I mean? It just, it, you know, the thing about body count is I always say it didn't make us rich. You know what I mean? But it made us known. That's why we're still here right now. You know, we got respect. We got street cred. You know what I mean? Because we stood for something. You know, it wasn't like, you know, a big flash. You know, a lot of 90s bands that are around us aren't even around now. But people are still waiting for us to do something else because we're still saying something relevant. Even though, you know, we're in our 60s, we still got an ear to the streets. We know what's going on. Nice. Right. You guys went out on a few tours. Uh, take us back to uh, maybe your favorite tour lineup and a favorite tour memory during this uh, debut album. Well, I, you know, I, I love touring with Guns N' Roses. You know, Duff McKagan is my, my dear friend. And they used to have a tent party every night. Uh, I mean, like a tent, like a circus tent. They had video games, hot tubs, you know, whatever you wanted, you know. And uh, I always said they had more broken equipment than we had equipment that works, you know. So it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was good touring with them. You know, that's, that's, that's touring, uh, you know, to a level that you, you – you don't really achieve you know what i mean it's like you got to ride on on that you know everyone gets their own tour bus and if you don't feel like catching the tour bus you catch the plane you know that's a whole nother tour level hmm. right for us that weren't there um there was an issue i believe in italy uh can you take us oh. back to what exactly <laughs> happened out there <laughs> well, well you know during during the the, the 90s and punk music we don't we're not a punk band but we sound like a punk band they used to spit on you right and that's when aids and all this stuff was just starting off you know what i mean so they used to spit on you so we're playing in italy you know the italians the gangsters anyway you know well, let me just ask you real quick before so when they spit on you that's a good thing oh yeah they love you to death that means they, they love, love you. okay they love okay you. It's, that's some punk stuff you know what okay I, mean? I just want yeah for uh, those that didn't uh, know <laughs> for, for us from the streets us from the streets that's not cool yeah so right right they're spitting all on us and everything okay. and so they spit all i'm not doing the guitar solo out front i'm getting spit all on me so we go backstage and i saw he says i looked at ernie ernie has spit all on him because i was doing the guitar solo and i was getting right to hit this note right here this a ball of spit in uh, on my guitar so i'm like let me go lower <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we changed <laughs> so anyway so we cleaned up so ice went outside so we we went out to play our our song and so i says to the audience he says everybody put one finger in the air we're gonna do cop killer put the other finger in the air and so when everybody has their hands up in the air he says ernie who's been spitting on us i said that guy right there and that guy right there. And I popped him, hit him, hit him. <laughs> next thing you know, his buddy tried to grab him. So just like next thing I know, I've just got a guitar and I'm like, you know, trying to punch him, you know. <laughs> so so what happens is, you know, we, we end the show. Then the audience starts booing us, you know, because they're upset. We don't get, they don't get the last song. They start throwing these big coins at us. So then Ice goes out there to apologize, you know. And our road manager comes behind him with a baseball bat. Ice doesn't know he's behind him, you know, going like with a baseball bat. He's from New York, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey Benzo, he's from New York. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he's trying. I'm like, so the next thing you know, we're like, okay, we got to get out of here. You know, we go backstage, we got to get out of here. They put the bus on a flat, you know, they, they did everything. So, so we're like, we ordered some cabs and we started to get in the cabs. And the cab driver took off. So our somebody, the road manager took the cab. Yes, yeah, it was just a mess. It, it was just, it's, you know, after getting out of alive, it's funny. But at the time, it was like, uh, yeah, right. I, I said, I've been in the army. This is like the scariest uh, moment ever. <laughs> he's a he's a ranger. He's like, this is scary shit. <laughs> yeah, that, so that sounds we, crazy. So we ended up we ended up inciting getting charged with inciting the riot even though we didn't incite the riot and you know just um, you like charges you know people like putting charges on you hmm. 
Right. Man, that sounds crazy. But, oh, but, it, but, but it ended up being okay afterwards, right? Because I, well, I saw somewhere that they apologized. and, and... No, no, no. The, 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 there was a big, big, uh, uh, like a DJ that's big all across the country, you know, a radio guy. So he gets us on the radio and I, he talks to Ice. He says, you know, what do you expect? It's Ice T. He's the original gangster. You can't go spitting on him and, you know, not <laughs> expect for him not to retaliate or do something, you know, after we, he told you not to do it. Right, right. Every, okay. every, the next shows we did, we started to show by like, don't spit on us. <laughs> right. you know, the show starts off, don't spit on us because we are going to clock you, you know? <laughs> oh, man, that's great. That's great. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been back since. Is that still a tradition uh, in Italy? No, we, we went back one time for a while there. We didn't play there. It was like, no, we so we went back like a, a few years back before the this pandemic hit. We went back and it it was you know things back business is normal you know usual. Right. The guys that did it they were they were kids you know they were nineteen twenty years old so they're probably 30, 35 now they're either gonna kill us or or it's gonna be dead you know <laughs> or it's over with right you know <laughs> you grow out of it or or just gonna hold a resentment forever and kill us you know <laughs> right. Yeah. Sounds like you guys are riding high uh, with that debut album. At what point does the cop killer controversy start to take a toll on the a group? Um, it really didn't. I mean, it 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 took a toll on us leaving Warner Brothers, but the group never stopped. Actually, we uh, went over to Virgin Records, and they kind of overpaid us. You know, the band really wasn't riding on. Um, single success we we got a controversy versus success that added into it you know what i mean so then the band right. came down to being a band again we got to virgin right uh can you remember those discussions uh when it was time to leave uh sire warner brothers uh the decision and, and what happened exactly uh that you guys had to uh well, leave early so to speak well, well we left early but it, it, it's good because they were just like they didn't we didn't have to recoup any money so uh, mm -hmm. the money that the advances that we got and everything like that we, they just let us walk away from it so that's kind of cool you know what i mean they're like okay <laughs> yeah. you can go on your own you're on your own so we we ended up over at, at uh virgin ice ended up at priority with his first record his first solo mm -hmm. record okay was that home invasion yes that was his, his first okay. solo record after that mm -hmm. okay like I said, the album is approaching 30. Does it seem like uh, it's been 30 years since you guys made that classic album? You know, it it, it seems like 30 years because we lost members of, of that. You know, Ice and I are like the only two original members of that band. You know what I mean? We lost Moose. We lost Vic. We lost D-Rock. And, you know, it's like it's and after every one, it's hard to pick up the pieces, you know? And I've had, you know, seven variations of this band, seven different variations of the band. Wow. And the only one that worked is the first one and the one I have now. That's the only two that worked. The others <laughs> were trying to feel out what it could be or become. And I always mm. say, like, every person in the band now is one removed from the, the original member. Like, I, like when, uh, when Moose died, we got Grizz. And the thing is, you can't replace Moose, but you can replace Grizz. So right. everyone is one removed. Because I right, after right. D Rock passed, I got Bendrix, and now we have Juan. After you know Vic died, we had OT, and now we have uh, uh, Will. So everyone's one removed. So I don't sit there going, "He's replacing Vic." You know what I mean? So right, right. It it, it works better. It works better. Right, right. And Ice T's son is involved. Oh yeah, we put him in. You know. We, I like him in the band. He gives us, you know, energy. You know what I mean. So we're sixty something years old. You know, you got right. you got him in his thirties, his twenties. You know, and it, it's fun to have him out there because it, it, he enjoys it. He's having a good time. It, it's, you know. What 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 is he doing the band? He's background vocals. Background vocals. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I just got to get him to more rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> you're 20 you're 27 years old it's hard to stop yeah, you yeah. know go hang out with a bunch of old men for all day long <laughs> right 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 now i wanted to ask you something the album carnivore right uh -huh. mm -hmm. i saw something that they were talking that 
what was what was the concept behind naming that album Carnivore? Because I saw something about vegan and we're not vegans. And- no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just like man is the biggest carnivore. Man is right. himself. You know, it's just revolves around that. It, it, we we have nothing about vegans. We had one song on the last record that we shot vegans. We're like, yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. really shooting vegans. <laughs> it just it just happened. We had this one song. And, uh, I think it was Talk Shit Get Shot. And, and, and it was a bunch of white people getting shot in the video. And yeah, someone yeah. said, you're killing white people in the video. We're like, no, the director brought his friends to be in the video. <laughs> <laughs> and they were white. <laughs> OK, I got you. I got you. That's cool. That for a 30th anniversary uh, with this album, you guys got anything up your uh, sleeve for this? No, we're just going to do a, another record this year. So it should be out sometime this year, and it'll be 30 years, you know. So that, that, that's the that's what we have planned. You know, this pandemic kind of threw everything into a, a different kind of mix because we haven't really gone out and played Carnivore or anything off that record. We only did like four or five shows last year. So hmm. it, 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 we're going to have like two or three albums worth of material to play. And it's hard to figure out what you play and, you know, how long you play it and, you know. And people still want to hear the old voodoo and stuff like that also. Right, right. right. You spoke a little bit about the pandemic. Uh, what keeps uh, Ernie C. inspired to make new music th- during these times? Uh, just, you know, just wanting to play. You know, I have, it's what I've been doing all my life. I, I enjoy playing. I, right now, I'm, I'm learning stuff off of YouTube, you know, learning all these licks. Because, uh, you know, when I was starting off playing, I used to have to have a needle and put it back and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, so YouTube is like the greatest thing ever. I've learned all kinds of new <laughs> tricks and things like that. You know, it, you, you never quit learning. You know, that's the thing about a guitar. You know, it's like you can you can learn but you never can learn like i can learn i'm a good rock guitarist but then i fake jazz you know what i mean so mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's you never can learn you know i, I saw this one kid doing uh, uh careless whisper and tuning the tuning things while he was playing i was like how the hell does he do that <laughs> you know it's always something wow a uh, quick question is it hard with with Ice T's schedule, right? I'm sure he has a busy schedule and everything. Mm-hmm. Is it hard to combine? Like, let's say if you guys have a date to perform somewhere, like if he can't make it, do you guys still continue without him? How does that? No, work? no, 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 no. He he's our singer. It'd be just like an instrumental track. It'd be like a punk rock karaoke. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, we, it usually works out because these shows are planned so far in advance. Okay. They, they generally work out, you know, like they're planning next year right now, you know, on these festivals. So it, we're way out, you know, okay. it, it has lots of time to plan it out. Cool, cool. Outside of Body Count, uh, is there any other avenue Ernie C uh, is uh, exploring at this moment? No, I, I, I've done an a animation cartoon that got held up because it was coming out of China. So <laughs> it, it got held up. I've been doing that. It was, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a uh, has to do with uh, the, 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 my guitar is the sound effects for all the characters' powers. Mm. It's, it's, mm. it's, it's kind of it's kind of interesting, but we we you know we um, we put it on hold because we had trouble with China and all this kind of stuff. But it, it'll be back. So that's what I'm I'm gonna do. Just end up doing that. Nice, right? And you know we we just signed a new deal with um, Sony, which is you know. Um, century media and it's a three record deal so that that that's gonna if we if we do this record right we'll just that'll just roll it on out you know we'll i'll be 80 years old by the time we finish with this record deal. <laughs> that's a that's a blessing yes it yeah. is it, it most definitely is you know to be able to just play the guitar you know just i mean you know and play the guitar get up in the morning and play the guitar that's that's a blessing you know because i i've done other things you know and do you, I mean, obviously you do, but do you find yourself to still enjoy it the same way you did back when you were a kid first picking up that guitar? Like, does that, do you, does that passion still feel the same? Yeah, it, it, it does. Right? Like, like, that's why yeah. I go on YouTube and learn how to play different things. Yeah. You know, I think, I think it's, it's good when people first hear you play, mm-hmm. you know, when they, they, they're like, you play and then you realize how far you've come. Right. You know what right, I mean? Right. Like when I play for somebody like, 
They're like, whoa, not guitar players, <laughs> because guitar players are so judgy. You play for, <laughs> for other people, when you just sit down and like you play for someone, they're like, oh, that's really cool, you know. Right. So you know, I've been playing for fifty years, and, I, and I'm still not where I want to be. You know, I listen to somebody else, I'm like, how the hell does Joe Pass play like that? You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. <laughs> that's good. That gives you something to always keep working towards and, and looking forward to doing and to keeping it exciting for you. That's the Quincy Jones thing, you know what I mean? That's Quincy Jones, you know what I mean? He he worked with Sinatra and he produced Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? Right, so, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for you oh, know, breaking down the barriers. It, it, What'd you it, say? It, I said it, it, it's always a pleasure to 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 talk when someone wants to to hear you talk about what's going on because sometimes you forget that you know we have been here doing this for 30 years you know what i mean and right you know so i appreciate you wanting to talk oh, to me no, you no. know man listen absolutely. this is an honor for us man trust me yeah absolutely as a as a black kid who who grew up on rock <laughs> and it's inspiring to see guys like you and Vernon reed and guys like that kick down those doors and let you know the world know that you know, rock is not white, you know, it can be played by blacks, it can be played by anybody. So right. you kicked those down years ago, and we want to thank you for that. Right. Um, for those who have been rocking with Body Count well over 30 years, what do you have to say to those supporters? Just keep on with us for another 30 years, you know what I mean? We're, we're going to do it as long as we can. We, you know, there's no sense in stopping now. You know, there's no retirement plan. Because, you know, what are we going to retire to? Playing guitar, you know? <laughs> when you when you music, it's not like being a basketball player or a sports star. Your body has nothing to do with it, as long as you can do it. You know, Mr. King played on stage till yeah. he was, you know, 80-something years old. Yep, yep. And yep, I love right. Mr. King. He gave me one of those little, um, the, little pins. He used to give away these pins. And I saw him play in Montreal. And, and the, the words I always hold to my heart is he said to me, he says, I like seeing young black kids play rock. That's, mm. And so I'm like, I'm 30-something. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I thought I was old when he says kids. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, know, now, that, you have to respect that. You have to respect Right, right, that, right, right. No, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. One last, I'll tell you this one funny story. Sure, about sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mr. Mr. King, Mr. King is the man. So he had this daughter that worked at his um, uh, his uh, place in Vegas. You know, he's a book out of, he had an uh, office in Vegas and his daughter, Penny, rest her soul. And um, so she, I called up one day to get tickets for one of his concerts, right? And so, uh, so uh, she says, I said, hi, Penny, this is Ernie. She says, hey, Ernie, how you doing? I said, I'm fine. She said, well, listen to her. Listen to this. Tell your no, because she, she was dating my road manager. She says, tell <laughs> your no good, lying ass, cheating motherfucking road manager not to ever call me again. As long as he lives, may he die in hell, you know, and all this kind of stuff. She went on. So I'm listening to her. I'm like, and she's like, yeah, tell him that, okay? I'm like, I said, okay. He says, now, Ernie, what can I do for you? <laughs> I said, I, said, I, said, I, said, I, I like some tickets to see Mr. King play. He says, oh, that's no problem. Daddy likes you. <laughs> but it, it, was like, it was like such a thing that she did this whole thing right before she told me that. I'm like, I'm like I, I, I thought she was going to just say, well, you can fuck off, too. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, said, this, he says, that's yeah. no problem. Daddy likes you. So I'm like, oh, he likes me. <laughs> I, I hold on to that, you know. Yeah, nice, nice. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Great oh, stories. Thank you for everything. Uh, before Thank we you. get out of here, can you uh, let everybody know where to keep up with Body Count and Ernie C and merchandise and everything uh, that uh, is involved I, with I Body think, Count? I think it's bodycountband.com. Mm -hmm. Bodycountband.com. And I'm Ernie4321 on Instagram. And, you know, and you know, Ice is uh, uh, final level on Twitter. You know, he he does that. You can always follow Ice. You know, right, right. Well, listen. Once again, like Sincere said, man, thank you for taking the time. We appreciate you, man. Much success, continued success, may I say? Cool. Tell the whole band we say salute. Keep rocking. Tell yep. T keep doing his thing, and hopefully and we can have you back soon. 
And we, we, we still owe, uh, in New York, we still owe a show there that we was put on hold before the pandemic. When we play, hit me up and, you know, come and see oh, each other, okay? Oh, All right? man, definitely, definitely. I appreciate okay? that. All right. That. Do, you happen to, right. do you happen to know the date out the gate? No, no. Know the date? no they, we just owe them a show. We know that. So okay. whenever. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, there was some theater we were going to do it there. To, and, and it closed, you know, they shut everything down. But we're yeah, still yeah, making yeah. up shows, so. Okay, we'll absolutely. Keep a, we'll, we'll keep, keep in touch. Yeah, yes. Man, right. thank you. Thank you so much, well, Ernie C., for everything. All right. I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Right.